Welcome to the SysAdmins Show. This is the podcast that explains everything SysAdmins do and the technology they work with. I am your host, Dustin Rebrick, here to give a jumpstart to your IT career. This is episode 31, In the Lab with AWS LightSail. Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to the show. This is another In the Lab episode. And for those who are listening to the podcast, if you want to follow along with the video, you can jump on the link in the show notes to my YouTube channel and see the video there. So we're going to jump right in here with a couple of updates and follow up. So this is actually my second try at this video. I made it about three quarters of the way through the content last time and had some uh, unexpected DNS issues where I didn't realize the, the DNS records I was trying to change were hosted by a different uh, hosting provider. So the changes I w was making were not taking effect properly and were kind of being overwritten as the two providers kind of fought back and forth. So that's been resolved now, kind of offline, and I'm ready to make a second go. So let's hope this one works without any issues. What we've got is AWS light sale. And a couple of months ago, I went looking for a new web host. I started doing a lot more websites and um, wasn't super happy with the one I have. It's a pretty standard or right, cPanel kind of uh, what you would expect from a shared hosting provider. And it's just, it's it can do everything I need it to do, but it doesn't feel like a real technical solution to me. It feels kind of run of the mill. So when I found out that Amazon had a hosting, a kind of entry level, if you will, flat rate hosting option, I, I took a look at it and now I am not going to host uh, anywhere else unless I need a little bit more power. So let's take a look at this for a second. This is, like I said, uh, on, I'm logged into my panel here. Um, this is a service by AWS and AWS has a lot of services. If you, if you click here and see all of their management consoles, right? There's EC2, right? The kind of stuff that you'd kind of come to expect from Amazon, S3 storage, um, Amazon Route 53, that kind of stuff. And I haven't, other than Route 53, I haven't done a lot with Amazon. So this is kind of my introduction to Amazon, Amazon compute power and storage. So so far, I'm, I'm really liking what I've seen so far. So let's close out some of these tabs and take a look. I've created a WordPress multi-site instance on my Amazon LightSail in, um, account. And we'll go ahead and create a new one here and just kind of walk through the whole process. The first thing you do is you pick your hosting zone. So I'm on the East Coast, I'm picking Virginia. And then you pick Linux or Windows. There is a price difference. And for my purposes, Linux works fine. It's a little bit cheaper. I'm going with Linux. And then you can kind of pick the predetermined software package, or you can just go for a lamp and say, I want to kind of deploy my own stack and go from there. So I want WordPress, but not only do I want WordPress, I want WordPress multi-site. I want to be able to host two or three or four or what, however many I need WordPress sites on this one host. So I clicked on WordPress multi-site and there's a couple of unique things that are going to happen because of the multi-site. If you've never done WordPress multi-site before. So let's go ahead and click that and move on down. And we're gonna, just going to skip this optional stuff. There is an SSH key pair. So this is how you would authenticate more or less to be able to not authenticate, but this is how you would be able to uh, get access to the SSH session. But uh, the Amazon has a built-in SSH module kind of right on the website. So you don't, you don't even need to use something like PuTTY. You can do this right on their website. So I didn't even end up breaking out PuTTY for this because I wasn't doing too much in there. Just a couple of quick twe tweaks and changes and the rest is through the web browser. And you're logging in with your Amazon account to do that. So it's all very secure. Um, so if you needed or wanted to use PuTTY, you could get this or change this by the, def the default way, and then you'd be able to connect and have it be secure. So as we scroll down here, you can see the, the tiny account, the smallest one they make is $3.50 a month. And this is not their typical pay as you go scenario for Amazon. This is actually a flat rate fee. So you get access to half a gig of RAM, one virtual CPU, 20 gig SSD and one terabyte of bandwidth, right? Transfer bandwidth for $3 and 50 cents a month. 
And for the work that I do, I don't have a ton of traffic going to my stuff. I'm not sending back a lot of, uh, you know, gigabytes and gigabytes of data. So this is plenty for me. And what we're going to do here is take a look at a couple of these overages. So if you go above the inbound, the, uh, the in and outbound traffic, that one terabyte, then only your outbound traffic counts after that. Your inbound traffic does not count after you've used up your inbound and outbound, which is kind of interesting. They're, they're counted, they're both counted against your one terabyte total to start with, but then after that only outbound counts. Anything you bring in does not count. So you're gonna be charged nine cents a gigabyte after that, which is roughly $90 a terabyte. Now, if you look at the second plan here for $5 a month, so only a couple dollars more, a dollar fifty more that gives you two terabytes of bandwidth so if you did need to go above that one terabyte you wouldn't pay per use you would just upgrade your plan to the five dollar a month plan and then give yourself an extra terabyte and that kind of happens as you go it's actually more cost effective in a lot of ways to pay for a bigger plan than it is to pay per use for bandwidth um, the next thing you get with this is five static ips in three domain zones so that lets you host up to three different DNS kind of top level domains from here. You have to own those domains, obviously, but then also five static IPs. So those static IPs don't cost you anything as long as they are attached to an instance. If they are in your account and reserved, but attached for more or not attached to an instance for more than one hour, they're going to start charging you a couple cents per hour for that static IP, it's a pretty small fee, but this is just to make sure that you're not sitting on static IPs that aren't being used in some way. So for domain zones, I'm not gonna leverage any part of the domain hosting part of LightSail. I do all a lot of my hosting with Hover right now and they work fine, but what I'm going to be switching to is Route 53. I use them a lot um, for my professional career. And I like, I like the panel, I like how they work. It's very fast, lots of options. So I would end up using Route 53 rather than this um, if I ever move away from Hover. So 20 SSL certificates per year is what they say. I still don't see where that's counted or how that works, but that's what they say is available. Um, 10 SANs per certificate. So a SAN is a subject alternative name. That means that on one certificate, you can have up to 10 different DNS entries. So for example, sysadminshow.com is an A record. That's one entry. www.sysadmin.com or sysadminshow.com is another entry. That's, that would be two, right? So if you had two entries, which I do recommend that you do for every domain, you could do five domains, five separate websites per DNS, per SSL certificate, and you get 20 of them with this. So plenty to work around with. And it's all using the uh, the new, uh, what's that called? Uh, the new free uh, SSL certificate provider. We'll, we'll get into it as we get through the process here. Um, all right. So the first thing you have to have is an AWS account. It's free to create one. And so go ahead and do that. Just jump on aws.amazon.com and create a free account. And then if you don't already have one, and then click over to the Amazon light sale area and let's get into uh, finishing up th this instance here. So we're gonna leave this as a small account and we're gonna leave this name WordPress multi-site uh, two, that's fine. You can create more than one of them at a time if you really wanted to. For this demo, we're just gonna create the one and we could use tags and other things that we're not gonna mess around with here. So let's create that instance. And now that's creating. So one thing that we want to do is get our static IP ready. Now, because DNS takes a few minutes to propagate, I've gone ahead and reserved a static IP ahead of time, but it's not attached, right? So this 3.22.186.42, this is my static IP that we're going to use for this demo. And we'll attach it as soon as the instance is ready. So I've already pointed the DNS records for a couple of test domains to this IP so that we can use them as part of the, the demo here. There we go. We're ready. So let's click into the instance and 
You'll see across the top here, let's go through some of the options. There's the connect tab that we'll be going through storage. If you want to add, we've got a 20 gig SSD storage. It's part of the OS. If you want to add on anything extra, you can do that. It gets pretty expensive, but it's an option and recommended depending on what kind of application you're doing. The built-in storage is fine for this website. Um, you can look at metrics as time goes on. We can now attach the static IP that we created. So I'll attach that and static IP two to WordPress multi-site two. No, nope, but somehow it, I did that wrong. Let's go back. Let's go under networking and do it this way. Let's click on static IP two, attach it to WordPress instance and say attach. There we go. I think I accidentally was trying to create a third static IP throughout that process. Okay, so now we can click into our instance and under networking, it's attached. And this is our private IP. Private IP is actually kind of cool. And it, uh, the more instances you create here, the more private IPs you have, it automatically puts them all in the same subnet. So if I wanted to have some communication between these two instances, I could do that on the private network and that's all free. There's no cost for bandwidth on the private network. Uh, I've got a firewall here that's on by default and automatically it's blocking everything except SSH, HTTP, and HTTPS, which is kind of a good default. And then load balancing is also very expensive. We're not going to enable that or talk about that here. Snapshots are kind of cool. You can create automatically or manually snapshots of your instance. And basically for a 20 gig instance, it's going to cost you a dollar a month to have a snapshot. So you could have one, two or more of these and just for a kind of an extra dollar a month per, as long as you're not going above that 20 gigs, you have a backup, kind of a backup of your environment. So if you wanted to go ahead and do maybe a, a WordPress software upgrade or something that was kind of risky, you could quickly take a snapshot and then do the upgrade. If it doesn't go well, you could just back up and restore the snapshot. If it does go well, you could delete it. And then you only pay for the snapshot kind of on a per hour basis as you needed it. So that's kind of nice. Um, tags, we're not going to go into history. Isn't really important. And then delete. Uh, if you wanted to get rid of it, then you would delete it and then make it a big red button so that you know it's dangerous. So under the connect area here, we're going to first of all look at are um, this is that console I was talking about and we're you didn't even have to log in we're already at the bash shell here so it's telling us that we've got a username of bitnami this is the software package that amazon is using to kind of deploy all this and run all this which is kind of nice you'll notice that if we do a show well, again I'm, <laughs> I'm in uh, networking mode here okay so if we do an ls we can see that there is a Bitnami application password listed here. So if we do a cat Bitnami application password, all cat does is dumps the contents of a file, text file out. Um, that's our application password. And then there's been a Bitnami credentials. So cat Bitnami credentials. And um, this is basically the same thing. So that application password and the Bitnami credentials has, they are the same password. So the user is user and the password is, is HK, capital HK. So we are going to copy this for later use. All right. Um, for those that don't know about Word, Notepad++, it's a fantastic word editing or kind of note, note taking and um, manipulation program highly recommended so I'm going to paste it in there for right now and we'll be coming back to that kind of on a regular basis so what's the first thing that we have to do here well I've already set up my DNS records to point to this IP so that's taken care of now I need to set up my primary domain so I need to tell this thing and I'm going to type out here I'm going to use two different domains I'm going to use uh, light sale dot show dot com and I'm going to do new site.sysadminshow.com. All right, let's use those as our example. So we need to go in to the console here and tell Amazon, tell LightSail that we want the primary domain to be 
lightsale.sysadminshow.com. And we will do that by following these instructions. So this is right from Bitnami's website. Kind of they run you through a few different scenarios. We already know what we want to do. So I'm going to run this command here and make this happen. So we need to do this sudo. See if I can get them both in here. All right, let's go side by side. Okay, sudo bn config. Oh, I gotta go to the right uh, directory first, my bad. Okay, so cd slash op slash bitnami slash apps slash wordpress. Okay, now I can do my sudo, which is kind of my administrative command, bn config. Is it not there? Let's just take a little ls look. There, it's there. Okay. It just won't let me tab to autocomplete it for whatever reason. Slash dash dash machine. D underscore host name. And then I want it to be light sale dot sysadmin show dot com. It's thinking about it and in a second here it should accept that and tell me that it's good excellent no errors i'm going to assume that means it's successful so then it, what it's telling us here is um, it has an auto config this bn config runs on startup and automatically kind of changes it back to the default we don't want it to do that so we need to disable this and to do that, you simply just rename the file. So again, you need sudo privilege to do that, sudo. And we're going to say mv is how we're going to rename this file. So kind of the move command, but move it with a new name, bn config, and then bn config.disabled. Boom, ls. And now you can see that bn config is dot disabled. All right, we should be in good shape for right now. We do not need um, this panel up anymore. So let's see. Let's now go to our WordPress site and just take a look around just to see what's happening. So like I said, I already pointed the DNS there, so we don't have to worry about doing that. So if we go to lightsale.sysadminshow.com, if everything is spelled correctly, Hey, look at that. Just another WordPress site. That's pretty cool. So if we go there and we go slash WP dash admin. Now we're logging in and we have user and we need that automatically generated password. Copy that out of Notepad++. Paste it right in there. And we're logged in. So far, everything's going great. I do not want LastPass to remember that password because I'm going to dump this after we're done with the demo. But for anybody that does not know about LastPass, highly recommend it, fantastic password management uh, tool. All right, so let's take a look here at my sites, network admin and sites. This is gonna be a little unusual. If you're used to using just a single uh, site WordPress, then you will not be used to this admin panel, but other than that, it's pretty pretty standard WordPress kind of layout. So we can see our lightsale.sysadminshow.com is here. That got there because we made that entry inside uh, the console there. We want to add a new one. And this one's going to be called new site. And this gets a little kind of annoying. You basically have to name it as a subdomain to the default or to the primary and then afterwards you can name it rename it completely so we're going to leave this just new site and we'll just call it new site and you do have to put an added admin email for this too so we'll just say dustin at sysadminshow.com that is something i do not have working yet i have not gotten this uh this wordpress environment in lightsail to email me yet 
something is misconfigured. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. All right, now if we click on My Sites, Network Admin and Sites, we see it listed here. If we click on Edit, we can fix it. So I want this to be new site.sysadminshow.com and I'm going to leave everything else the same. Save that. All right, so now let's go there. New site.sysadminshow.com and we now have our second Amazon LightSail hosted WordPress instance or WordPress site going and these are both hosted on the same WordPress installation. So this has been not too long and we've already got some websites up and running here. This is actually pretty cool. So what are we missing? We're missing SSL. So as a default now, you want your website to be uh, encrypted. You want it to be secure when people access it. And not only as an option, but as the enforced default. We don't want people to be able to connect to this unless they're doing HTTPS. So we do that back in the console. And I believe we're going to do, um, click on this link here. Okay. So again, we're looking at some Amazon. Nope, that's not what I want. Let's click on this link. Okay, here we go. Back to, back to the Bitnami documentation and find out how to do this with them. So there is a thing called the BN cert tool. And this is how we're going to do this. So this uses Let's Encrypt, which is what I was trying to remember before. So Let's Encrypt is now this kind of open, free, uh, SSL cert, domain-based SSL cert or domain level uh, creation tool. And it, it's meant to be automated. The certs expire every 90 days. And it's fantastic because it's basically let the, you know, the majority of the internet um, for a very minimal you know, effort and no cost to get SSL working. So let's go back to our panel here and type in this tool. So we got to go to a new spot. It's in, uh, let's see, sudo. We got to go to opt slash bitnami slash the insert tool. Okay, we're going to run this. And I believe it's going to ask to be updated because that's what it's done every other time. And yes. We want to update this. Okay, so now it downloads the new version. We just run that same command again. And I guess it downloads the update over top of the, the existing one. And now we're good to go. This tool will not be able to enable slash disable redirections in the WordPress stack. I have no idea what it's saying about that. Um, I have not seen that error before. Let's see if that stops us from doing anything. Okay, push enter to continue. Okay, so first we want to create our DNS list. And these are all the websites that we want as part of the certificate. These are the SANS that I was talking about before. All right, the first one we list is going to be the primary certificate name. And then all the other ones are going to be listed under the SAN area. So we want to do light sale dot sysadmin dot com, sysadmin show dot com. Make sure, I don't want to have to do this again, so make sure I spelled it right. Looks okay. And it's going to ask me right away, um, do I want to include www dot? And yes, I do. So we're going to say yes to that. And I can tell you right now, from the last time that I did this demo, this these prompts are different. So they've already updated their tool even more than I've seen. So. Oh, I did something wrong. I'm supposed to separate the, dom do more than one domain and separate them by spaces or by commas. So let's go ahead and say, no, do I want, agree with these changes? No, I need to change again. Now I have to list them both. Uh, so let's do that. Space. There's one, then space and new site. And then it's going to 
ask if I want to do the www for both. I say yes. And now, all right, so it's going to say, it's confirming which DNS entries is making changes for. It's going to automatically create a cron job, right? An automatically running job. That's going to renew the, the certificates each month, even though they're expiring every 90 days. It's going to renew them every month, which is great. It's changing the web server name and it's going to start web server again once all this is done. So previously there were some options in here for forcing uh, redirection to www. Those options are now gone because of the new tool. So I don't know what's going to happen exactly. Let's go ahead and say yes. Everything I see here looks good. All right, valid email address. Says Dustin at sysadminshow.com. We'll be fine. Do I agree with Let's Encrypt? Yes, I do. All right, so this is now validating that I own these domain names. How's it doing that? It's checking to see if the domain names point to this static IP. If it if they do, then that's domain validation. It's proven that I can control the DNS entries of the of these domains. So this shouldn't take too long, but it does have to generate some SSL certificates. So it's a little bit involved here. And let's see. Succeeded. And enter to continue. Perfect. All right, that should be all that is required. If we now go back to new site and hit refresh, nothing changes. But if we type in, because this is not HTTPS, HTTPS colon slash slash. Perfect. No alarms. And let's click on this search. So in Chrome, they click the little lock icon and click on certificate, we are now seeing um, a valid certificate for lightsale.sysadminshow.com. Click on the details page. We can scroll down a little bit and find the subject alternative name option here, selection. And now we can see those four domain names are listed under this area. So that's, we can have up to 10 of these per certificate. We only used four in this instance. All right, that's all looking good. Let's see and just verify that it works for the other one. Uh, we want to do HTTPS. Oh, what was it? Light sale dot show dot com. And there we go again. No alarms and a good certificate. So now those are encrypted. So historically, the BN cert tool, when I did this just a few days ago when I was trying this process out before, the BN cert tool was offering up the option right in there at the end to redirect automatically all traffic to HTTPS. And that is something that I recommend. Since that tool is not doing it right now, I'm not going to try to figure it out uh, as part of this video, but uh, maybe we'll post an update if I can figure out how to do that with the new tool seems to be something that they're continuing to evolve. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is fix a possible cookies issue. So let's take a look at this. When I go to, let's say the new site, .sysadminshow.com, and I wanna log in as an admin. So I go to wp-admin. Let's see if it lets me do this. So user and Pull up my password again. Error. And this is what I've been seeing um, as well, is cookies are blocked or not supported by your browser. You must enable cookies to use WordPress. This is not an inaccurate, I guess it's an inaccurate uh, warning or error message. So if you're getting this, what's going on is the server is not looking at the right domain for the cookies for this subdomain because this 
um, news site is a sub right is a is a child of the parent site lightsail.sysadmin.show.com. So any of the children sites have this error until we fix it. So to fix that, we go to this documentation. And what we got to do is we have to find this file and this word wp-config.php file and add this define cookie domain entry. So let's go ahead and do that. This file should be um, nearby. I think it might be in hgdocs. lshd Yep, there it is. Okay, so let's do a sudo nano. Nano is a quick little text editing tool. We have to open it with admin privileges though. And let's do htdocs slash wp con big dash php. Okay, we are in that file and we're just going to scroll down a ways here until we find the that's all stop editing here area. So that was the top of the file again. Okay. Da, 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 da. If I was better with Nano, I could probably search for this and bring it up right away. Oh, there it is right there. That's all stop editing here. So I'll just put in an enter, enter, and then start typing define. Okay, so I'm going to do control O and hit enter to write it out and then control X to exit out of nano. So now I should be, that should be fixed. And the question is, do I have to restart the service to make that take effect? It's possible that I do. Let's just go ahead and reload the page and see if that's enough. It is not enough. So I don't think I had it in here how to restart the server. It was pretty easy though. I just looked it up last time. Bitnami restart Apache. There we go. Okay, so that's running now. Let's go back and revisit this page. Let's see if we can log in. And look at that, let's just write in for newsite.s7show.com. So that should not be bothering us anymore. Okay. So let's take a look at another thing that I think we need to fix here, unless they fixed it. All right, so you go to your new site.sysadminshow.com and look down here in the corner. See this thing that's stuck there? That's not just for us. If we were to do this in Edge, Right, so there's no association with being logged in. It's not just for admins. And go to the same thing. Look at that. Everybody who visits your website is going to see. Oh, you can't see it right now because I'm in the way. 
There we go. Get rid of me. Everyone who visits the website is going to see this Bitnami manage little pullback thing. And no, you don't want that there, right? You don't want that showing for everybody. So how do we get rid of that? Well, what we're going to do is, again, go to uh, the Bitnami documentation. Let's go to cd slash opt slash Bitnami. Take a look around. So if we do ls WordPress. Oh, we did. This is the BN config file that we changed. So cd WordPress. So it is in the WordPress directory. We just renamed it to BN config .disable. So we can probably just call it as it is. Let's give that a try. BN config .disabled. Dash dash disable. Banner one. Probably need to do sudo. Commit up found is not happy with this. All right, so let's rename this sudo mv bn to bn config. Okay, so this is somebody getting the same report that we're getting. Oh, it's the dot. So it wants us to run dot slash in front of BN config. There we go. So maybe we've actually got something going on now. Let's take a look. Hey, look at that. It's gone. There we go. There we go. We'll do our final test here on edge. Perfect. Now we're ready to go. So obviously this is a completely blank WordPress instance. There's nothing in mean, this. There's no theme. There's no content. But that's out of scope for this discussion. We now have a WordPress multi-site instance set up on Amazon uh, Light Sale. It's costing us three dollars and fifty cents a month. No matter how much uh, we put on there, up to twenty gigs of storage and but performance wise cpu wise we're not going to get charged anything extra and we get one terabyte of transfer per month so this is i, I mean i'm finding it hard to believe this is kind of the same price that you'd get with those lower end vsps out there so and the performance on this is fast i'm seeing this thing go much faster than my standard vsp would so i'm really enjoying uh, the testing i've done so far so also going through this process not only is giving me a host that i'm actually going to use now for some of my websites but it's given me exposure to the amazon ecosystem so i mean amazon is the biggest player in the cloud space right now and cloud and azure for microsoft are, are are gaining traction and kind of coming up and getting a lot you know have a lot going on and they're good technology but they're not as widespread as amazon is yet and this is the kind of stuff that is just good to know for anybody who's out there in the IT world. So a great experience, kind of gets your feet wet, but you can control costs. Um, if uh, pretty much any website that I have planned going forward, and maybe even some small web apps or projects that I have planned, maybe even some lab environments, some dev environments that I want to play around with, I'm going to do an Amazon light sale. I'm going to try this out and see how far I can push it before it starts to either become too expensive or I just hit some of the limits of its capabilities. Maybe then I'll start going over to EC2 and S3 to start doing some more stuff. 
I'm really starting to look more at the cloud. I have not done enough with it yet, and it's becoming a big enough part of my daytime job and just the world that we're in today that I can't continue to ignore it. I've got to start learning more about uh, these cloud technologies and, and just jump into them. So um, as always, I want to hear from you. Um, any questions about your education, career, technology, or ideas for future episodes or feedback on this video, uh, this episode, shoot me emails, Dustin at sysadminshow.com. And until next time, I encourage you to never stop learning.